Okay, this is a second part to the 10 things that can affect your retirement. Um, this was actually part of the other video, but for some reason the last two pieces got cut off. Um, I think it's happened between moving the files and for some reason it's just chopped the end off and never told me. Uh, but the problem is I don't have the other bit of the file anymore. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go over the last two and I have to apologise, I'm sick, that's why there's very little video activity today um, because I've basically got the flu. Now, we got to number two. Number two is family life. Family life costs in the Philippines can grow quite quickly. Um, when I say that, I'm talking about when you have children. You get married, you have children and then you may have people that may want some sponsorship you know you may think oh, i'll sponsor the niece or whatever because she's great blah 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 um but primarily we're talking about your direct family as in your kids your wife etc so you may have some medical issues that will be covered within the family so vaccines uh, regular checkups um the schooling costs the nannies tuition Eating out gets a bit more expensive. Going to play parks instead of going to the restaurant or adding it means that you're spending more money than you normally would. Your commute costs go up, etc., etc. Your general expenses increase because you may go, oh yeah, but you know the kids don't normally pay for the young kids on the jeepney. No, you don't. But because you've got young kids, you may actually use the taxi for the air conditioning so they don't get hot and sweaty, that sort of thing the fact that you'll be carrying push chairs and stuff and that extra expense but you'll want to put them in the taxi rather than trying to get on a jeepney at five o'clock in the afternoon when there is peak rush hour and everybody's chock a block on the jeepneys those sort of things change your costs um that's why i say you know with with my kids the their costs are about the same as mine um now bear in mind i have quite an expensive lifestyle for the philippines uh, we we eat out quite a lot uh, when we're there, uh, and we often take people out as well. So we have an expensive lifestyle compared to the majority of expats. But on top of that, with the kids' expenses, um, we have private healthcare, we have private school tuition, we got um, private private school nanny. Um, Tran private transportation to and from the schools etc etc that is a huge additional burden that a lot of people do not factor in and as such is a cost that you need to think about and the last one on the list um, is boredom really is boredom people buy businesses in the Philippines often for something to do um, but they they don't want to run it they just want to say oh, I've got a restaurant I've got this then they complain the chef's stealing. They complain there's no respect from the staff, or they complain that uh, there's problems in the business where there's arguing, or the mayor's being a pain, whatever it is. You get these extra headaches that you don't really want. Um, but also, alcoholism is a major problem within the expat community. Uh, a lot of people drink from 10 a.m. or even earlier, and then you'll find at 11 o'clock at night, they're still drinking, they have a couple of shots of something before they go to bed. So they lose their sort of life in the Philippines and become wrapped up inside a bottle. Um, the thing is, the Philippines has a lot to offer, but you, a lot of it is not on your doorstep. A lot of it is available, but you need to say, where is this? I want to go and do this and force people to get to do it because they'll know where to do it but often they won't tell you um, let me give you a list of things that you could be doing first thing is you could go snorkeling scuba diving um, traveling around the Philippines do motorcycle rides you could um, take up farming or small-scale um, gardening uh, you could do tropical fish breeding you know just an example um 
because when you do the oh well we'll go swimming well you go swimming and then like after about a couple of weeks of it you stop going even though the resorts or whatever is on your doorstep i know people that don't even swim in their own pools very often um but you could actually do stuff like i want to set up my own little charity project um i want to set up my own little library and give away books and that sort of stuff there's a lot of little things you can do which keep you occupied and also you get involved with things going on in the community and that's the, that's the key element is sort of getting embedded with the, the locals so you're not the foreigner on the outside but somebody who's part of the community and I will say you will get people come in and say you give me money and I'm more like I give you a slap in the face you know <laughs> no Joking aside, I do. I am quite blunt with people to just tell them to get stuffed um, because they, it's it's offensive um, because they just assume because you're a foreigner you're stupid enough to give them money, um, which I dislike. And people know I dislike it, but at the same time, I still donate computers computers to the local school. Still got involved with painting classrooms out. Still trying to get some uh, kickboxing in. Um, taekwondo stuff for the local school um <coughs> but the point is there's proactive stuff you can do that keeps you away from the alcohol but also stops with the chasing the women that sort of stuff because a lot of expats get in a lot of trouble in the first year because for a, a guy in the philippines they regularly get approached by women now if you're bored at home and got nothing to do or you're sitting around the malls going i've got nothing to do that's when you start getting yourself into trouble so being proactive and doing stuff very very important boredom is probably the worst thing that happens to expats it's once they get bored they start doing stuff they shouldn't be doing or become depressed one of the two <laughs> if you're in the philippines and love it and everything's going great it's fantastic but if you get into a bit of a rut or something else please do something to change it one of the best things you can do is come out of the philippines for a month two months three months and then go back because you will it recharges the batteries you you're back in your peak you're happier again um and i apologize that this video actually broke but i've ended up with a longer video now but I'd say those are the 10 things that would have the most effect on most expats. Um, I'm going to have a look at the health cover stuff. I'm hoping to get 10 minutes today to actually get in touch with one of the insurance companies. They've sent me some stuff through. I've got to read it and then talk to them. Um, but I want to do a video on that because the health cover is one of the most important things um, I try to emphasize in the Philippines. And it may sound I overemphasize it, but I know enough people that have died because of no medical cover the Philippines will let you die they will hack your leg off in a motorcycle accident because you can't afford to have the uh, therapy and the extra surgery uh, to save your leg so it is important and that's why I'm constantly pushing good medical cover is extremely important for the Philippines thanks for watching